Hello everyone, and thank you for joining the webinar today on correcting common photography imperfections with PaintShop Pro. I'm joined by PaintShop professional, George Kurzik, who will be demonstrating how to fix these common issues, such as overexposure and underexposure, out of focus areas, poor lighting, poor white balance, and busy backgrounds in photography. As a special thank you for attending the webinar today, I'd like to offer you an exclusive 40% off any script, both bundles or individual scripts, available for purchase from within the PaintShop Pro Welcome Book for a limited time. You will receive the coupon code to redeem this offer in the follow-up email you'll receive tomorrow. Now, before I pass it over to George, I just wanted to remind you this webinar is being recorded and a link to watch the webinar uh, recording will be sent in the follow-up email you'll receive tomorrow as well. So keep an eye out for that email tomorrow. Uh, that takes care of all the housekeeping items from me. Now I'll go ahead and pass it over to George. Well, good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. How are we today? Well. Uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit today about uh, something that frustrates all of us, really. It's, it's, uh, I want to be able for you to save those pictures that you, that you take and you get frustrated when you first look at them. And, and I'm going to show you how to try and, and use the tricks that I've discovered to, to save them and actually make them some winners. Uh, I themed this little presentation don't throw them out. Try to recover those pictures. So what we'll do is, is again, I'll, I'll uh, give a little, you know, five, six briefing slides here, and then we'll go right on to into the software, and, and we'll edit a few, and and I'll walk you through the steps I take. If you're interested, you'll see a lot of these pictures and a number of others at my website. I post all my pictures at flickr.com slash photos slash Kurzik. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at gkurzik at yahoo.com. I'll, I'll answer every one. Uh, and, and like I said, you'll, you'll see a copy of this presentation uh, on, the, uh, on the Corel website, along with two others I did previously, if, if you're interested. Uh, one is on blue hour photography and the other is on HDR uh, uh, cityscapes. So there's a, there's a number of different things out there. In the meantime, let's let's get into it here. Well, you've been waiting for the hummingbird, you've been waiting for the clouds, you've been waiting for the right light. You start shooting away, and at the end of the day, you're 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 a bit disappointed with what you got. You you don't know uh, what you're going to do. You 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 feel like you've wasted some valuable time, and more importantly, you think you might lose some important pictures. Well. Every one of us, we've we've all run into this, and and me especially. I, I do a lot of HDR work. I, I and a lot of times I'll find a place where I want to set up, and and I'll, I'll I'll wait for hours to get the right light, and and it's only to find out maybe later I've got some poor exposure, either over or underexposed. I might be out of focus. Uh, I might have some bad lighting or bad white balance. I always get noise in sensor spots. I, I'm a I'm a religious photographer. I try to shoot as often as I can. I pull lenses on and off my cameras. I'll uh, I'll talk a little bit how to get noise in sensor spots, and and a lot of times I uh, unwanted busy backgrounds. And uh, again, I'll show you how to edit. Do some creative editing. Do that. Uh, don't delete them. You know that's my message. We're going to use PaintShop Pro to, to fix many of the common problems and uh, turn a turn a module photo into a great one. And this is one of the photos we're going to edit today, actually. I, I was setting up my tripod camera in, in my backyard. Uh, it, it was hummingbird season for these last few months, and I had plenty of them, and trying to capture them. And, and uh, you know, I have a couple of these we're going to edit. But here's a few examples of before and afters, uh, and especially with wildlife uh, and, and animals. You know, I a lot of times I'll end up shooting at shutter speeds that gives me an underexposure, uh, some random shots that we can try and turn into winners. Uh, here, uh, doing some bridge work, and uh, I wanted to modify the photo a little bit, and of course, uh, a fawn 
and turned a really lousy image into something a little better. Again, here we're going to go from this is my actually my last side here in the PowerPoint before we move on to the software. We're going to talk about some of the tools that I use uh, in each one of these images. I'm going to crop them. I'm going to use the scratch remover. And actually, this is probably one of my favorite tools is the scratch remover. I go from uh, I use it not just I don't remove scratches. I remove sensor spots. I remove entire sections of pictures using my scratch remover. And I use it actually as a blending tool when I have two surfaces that I've, I've edited and I want to smooth them out a little bit. I use that as a as an all around tool. Be that and my cloning tool. I'm also going to show you how to use fill light to try and make a photo pop. We're going to do a little bit of sharpening as well as some AI upsampling, a, a very new and powerful feature that uh, that Corel's added, as well as the denoise and depth of field again to uh, make the your your images more interesting. So what I'll do at this time, you're going to see me do an alt tab. We're going to go over to uh, the actual software. I'm in Corel PaintShop Pro. I'm already set up. I've got the 2021 Ultimate, very powerful. A lot of neat tools in here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Anyway, uh, the first image I chose to edit is I was out in my backyard. I again, I was on my tripod. Was really after hummingbirds on flowers, a very difficult subject. Uh, but I happened to see this white sulfur wing off to my left, and so I swung the uh, the the 600 millimeter over, and I just clipped a shot or two. And as you can see, you know here, it's kind of a it. It's it's really a dull photograph. You know, there's not much to it. The photo, the the image is center. There's a lot of busyness all around it. And but when I looked at this for potential editing, the first thing I look at is is it in focus? Do I have at least a reasonable focus on the sulfur wing? And the answer is yes. So the basis of the raw material is there. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to walk you through how I'm going to make this a better image. Uh, and, and try and make this worth keeping. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop it. I, I, I believe in the rule of thirds, which is uh, I never care for an image in the center. I always like to have my image either in the upper third quadrant or, the, uh, or the, uh, in the right or left, because that's just natural. It's a, it's a natural viewing angle. And let's see, I'll get that right about there. I want to get the top of this this flower. I want to try and get the sulfur wing a little off center anyway. I want to try and get out this stem that's off to the left. And so I think this is a good start. So we're going to crop it. And there we're there. Okay. There we have pretty good potential. We got a lot of extraneous stuff here we're going to get rid of. Uh, plus the, the sulfur wing is not quite popping the way I like to see it pop. So what I'm going to do one of my favorite tools, again, is using the uh, uh, what what I call fill light. Not quite brightness and contrast, but it's a brightness and contrast tool under fill light. So the first thing I have to do to use that is I have to select the image. So I'm going to go into my selection brushes up here, and I'm going to pick the smart selection brush. There's a number of uh, selections there. You'll see freehand selection, magic wand, smart selection brush. I, I always, the two I use is freehand selection and smart selection brush. So I'll go to the smart selection and I'll, and I'll just basically click on the, the, the butterfly and it, and PaintShop Pro does a pretty good job of just picking out an area where it can see borders and for the most part, pick what I want. So I've selected it. Now what I'm going to do is go into uh, uh, adjust brightness contrast walk across now a lot of people like to go to brightness contrast and I use that a great deal for the overall picture but for individual objects like I just picked I'm going to do a fill light it does a nice job of just brightening objects that I pick so here I am I'm uh, at fill light and it just kind of brightens it up just a little bit so there's the before a little bit gray and now I'm trying to bring out a little bit more in it so I'm going to run that up to 80%. And while I'm here and I've got this selected, I'm going to also sharpen it while I'm here a little bit. So I'm going to just do an adjust and do sharpness and sharpen more. Just one pass, that's enough. 
And you'll see that's kind of uh, sharpened things up a little bit. If I go back, you know, it's a little soft and just one pass on the sharpening tool and that's enough for this image. Okay, now we're gonna back off. I'm gonna deselect this selection. So you go under selections here and select none. Okay, so now we have the basis of the image. Well, now I wanna get rid of some of this, these distracting items. One thing is whenever you have anything in your photograph, the eye is gonna to wanna to always go to it and look at it. So I wanna, I want the viewer to go right to this. So again, as I mentioned earlier, I do like using the uh, scratch remover. Even though these are bigger than scratches, I'm gonna go to 500, which is the maximum value I can use on scratches, on the scratch remover tool. So let's try this, gone. Let's try this one. Take a number of passes, like that. Now it's gone, a little bit there. And I could have cloned that out and, and that would be just as well too, but sometimes with cloning, you end up picking gradients from where you clone to where you're cloning to. With the, uh, with the scratch remover, it averages out from the right and left and it kind of makes a good blend. So I'm gonna just do that to get rid of all this here and make this image work. So I'm coming down to here. Now here we're gonna get a little fussier. What I'm gonna do is go much narrower on the tool. Going down to 200, I'm gonna zoom in. And we're gonna just kind of work that slowly. I wanna keep these lines just like this, okay? We're gonna keep this edge here so it doesn't look there. It's natural blend, you know, that's the trick. I'm gonna go down here and just kind of gradually work that out. And I think we've got it, just almost, just a little bit there. Good. And I wanna get rid of this little guy here. And that's again, that's an easy one. And there we have it. All right, now I'm gonna do a check on my picture. I'm gonna look for sensor spots because I do get those. Uh, with this um, with this gray back, with this more neutral background, they're usually harder to see, so I may not have a sensor spot problem. Uh, when we edit my sky picture a little later, you'll definitely see the sensor spots. And let's see here, we're gonna get rid of that and get rid of a little bit of that noise there. And I think we have a finished image. So there I've taken, oh, I'm sorry, there's one more thing I wanna do this. This is in sharp focus. This leaf here kind of anchors the picture. It gives us a frame of reference, but it, this one sharp leaf here, to me, I find distracting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a depth of field adjustment to blur that out a little bit. So I'm gonna go adjust depth of field in your adjust menu here, all the way down. Again, depth of field. I use the freehand selection under depth of field. You can go with a circle, a freehand, a square. I usually go freehand. This is not a precision instrument, so you don't have to be too, too uh, concerned. So I kind of work my way around. I draw a line around, just like this, all around my image here, because this is where I want to keep in sharp focus, down. And I've already got this set for a 10% blur. You can go, I mean, you can go crazy and you can go up to 100%. But again, any kind of change, I think, should always be incremental. You don't want to go too hard on any kind of changes you make. So I'm going to start with a 10. And that looks pretty good. We can go a little further with it, maybe up to 15. Yeah. Hit OK. And that goes out. And there we have what I would consider a finished image. And there's other tricks you can do to it a little bit if, if you don't like that. You can even clone this all out. But again, I think that gives you a frame of reference, the background of the uh, the leaves, yeah, the uh, the sulfur wing butterfly makes a nice image. The uh, the flower again adds a, a splash of color and, and uh, the neutral background, you know, is certainly not hurting my feelings at all. It's, it, I, I, I'm satisfied with this. So in this one, we've used the scratch remover. I haven't used the clone yet. I've done the depth of field and a little bit of brightening. We're gonna use that again on my next image. I'll carry you through this one here. Again, I would like, as I mentioned earlier, I was shooting butterflies, uh, excuse me, uh, hummingbirds. So with this one here, 
we were shooting a, a probably a, a bird against a very bright background. So I was correcting for the background. If I corrected completely for the background, I'd have a good exposure here and, and the bird would almost be black. If I corrected for the bird and got a perfect exposure on, on her, this would be blown out. And you can't use HDR for a moving object or something that moves too fast. But what we're gonna do is, again, use the fill light tool and a little bit of sharpening on, on her and uh, we can make this work. This is actually a pretty quick correction here, so we're not gonna be very long on this one. I'm gonna, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop because I don't want the feeder in there. I want the bird in flight. So I'm gonna get reasonably current, again, following my rule of thirds, I'm gonna put her in the upper left quadrant. I might, uh, you know, I could easily clone that out, but I'm gonna keep the image just about like that. That's about the size I want. Clone it, excuse me, crop it. And there we're at, oh, I left a little bit there, but no worries, we'll just use our scratch remover, get rid of that. All right, now we have the basis of a pretty good picture. Now we're gonna do the selection. Again, I go back here to the smart selection brush. Click on that in my editing menu, and I'm gonna pick the bird. Again, Corel does a very nice job of selecting. We've got almost all of her, but what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit my shift key and expand the selection a little bit. Just try and get a little bit of that wing that's very subtle. A little here, good. And I'm gonna expand here. It didn't quite reach to the end of the tail. Sometimes it needs a little coaxing. And if I don't get it, that's no worries. I can always add to it later. But let's see what we got here. Good. All right, got it covered. I'll make sure of that. All right, adjust. I go to back to my adjust menu. Brightness and contrast, subcategory fill light clarity. Okay. From here to here, it gives it a nice little brightening. So I'm at 80%, I'm gonna hit okay. Now, the thing we gotta be careful of is when we go to the fill light, it's done a nice job, put some light on the subject, but it also flattened it a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do, just to put a little contrast back in it, go to brightness contrast. This time I do use brightness contrast. I'm gonna bring up the brightness a little bit. Which is not very much, just enough to put some contrast in there. Here I got a seven and a six, you know, I just judge it as I look at it. A little flat a little more contrast. I'm gonna run this up to 10 and 10. Okay. There we go. Now, more tricks while we're here. Uh, I think I'm, I'm gonna do one pass on the sharpening. Adjust, sharpen, sharpness. I always pick sharpen more. I get a very pronounced effect, okay? I'm gonna deselect, select, uh, select none, and I'm almost done with this image. Now, here's where we get a little tricky, and, I'll, and I'm not gonna do the whole image because it'll take too long, but as I've brightened and I've sharpened, you'll see, as I zoom in, you'll see kind of a jagged line. That's where the border was formed from the selection. Well, I'd, it's hard to see it when the when you're looking at the overall image, but I know it's there, so I'm gonna get rid of it. And here's where the beauty of the scratch remover comes in. I'm gonna hit scratch remover. I go very narrow, only down to 30 here in the width. It's very small. And what this does, it does a nice job of just blending that out. See that? I can blend all that little line out. I don't care if it's sharp on the edge of the, of the hummingbird, you know? It's does just to get that little bit of there, that's, that's getting a little bit too much there. I'll blend that from the other direction. And let's see here, here. Now, especially on the wing, you can see where that kind of looks a little odd. So we'll just kind of run a soft blend on it using the scratch remover. It does a nice job of just blending into the, whatever background is in the back. And sometimes you can go both directions, just kind of very incrementally. And, and you can see the part we did. You don't see that 
a sharp line anymore. Here is a remnant of where I did a fill light. Well, we got to get rid of that. So I'll use my scratch remover. I'll go a little wider on it. But it was 60. Let's see if that's wide enough. Yeah, that's, that should do it. Just, I don't mind going over it over and over again. You know, again, incremental corrections are better than trying to do one big correction at once because then you end up having to correct many, many times. So here, just an incremental correction using my scratch remover tool. And I just can work right up to the edges, out, out, and there we go. And just back off, and there we have another finished image. Uh, again, what I'll do later, I would probably go around the edges a little bit here, work the wing a little bit, because you can see where there's still a, uh, still needs a little blending into the background. I'll use my scratch removing tool for that. But for the most part, I, I think this is a very satisfactory image. I got the glint in the eye, the eyes are in sharp focus, uh, and the rest of the bird is, is a standout. The only other thing I might look at, eh, even the eye doesn't need sharpening on this, so we're good. So now let's go to another image here. Oh my gosh, that is dark. Here I had a chipmunk pop up in front of me and I had all this distracting stuff here. It was one of the stumps in my backyard, but I liked him. And, and but I was originally gonna th toss this out, but then I looked, the first thing I looked for when I had something like this, well, I had sharp eyes, you know, a little bit soft back here, but that's no problem. The, the portrait, at least part of it, is in pretty good shape. So the basis for the, for the shot is there. Well, let's do a few things to start off. First of all, it's just a little crooked, or what I want to do is I want to try put his head almost as a straight up position. So I'll use a little tool here called the straightening tool. Uh, that's where you can straighten a picture or you can make a picture as, as cattywampus as you want. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of tilt them a little bit to the left, just a little bit. And let's take a little bit more. Good, kind of straight up, that's good. Now I'm gonna crop, because I don't want, I wanna focus on him obviously. So again, using my cropping tool, I'm gonna put him in the upper right. Uh, again, following my famous rule of thirds that I've, I'm a believer in. We'll crop that out. That's good. It's getting there. Oh, well, we got to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to blend this out and then we're going to brighten him up. So first thing we're going to have to do is let's go to our, this one. We're not going to use a scratch remover. And now we got to get a little serious here. We're going to go to the cologne. This is an easy one to clone. Going to go to about 250 on the size. And I'm going to, whenever I clone, you want to work the axis, especially when you have rings on a tree like this. We're going to kind of work the axis here. So, what I'll do is I'll click here, right click the section I'm going to take, and I'll go here to the left, and then we'll clone it out. Just kind of walk that out a little bit, just like that. Let me get rid of that part too. There we are, out. Well, I've got the cloner. I'm going to get rid of this up here. I'm not shy about taking broad swaths of a, a picture out. I'll blend that all out and get rid of that. That doesn't look too bad. Now, what we'll do is I'm going to pick the chipmunk, him or herself, uh, using my smart selection brush. I want to brighten, brighten, brighten that. The chipmunk up a little bit because it is kind of dark. I'm going to gently walk the tool around the chipmunk, allow it to select. And this is these are not rushed. So, and again, does a pretty good job of trying to find most of the borders. Get there. Okay, I think we got most of it. A little bit missing here in the ear and a little bit here. So we'll do again as I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna press my shift key just to pick the areas that the tool didn't get on the first pass. Just like that. A little bit more. And we're gonna, it doesn't have to be too darn precise because again, when we blend later, we'll correct for a lot of the errors. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Let me zoom out, take a look at the overall picture. 
I'm not going to worry about the toes. That's fine. That's good. So we've got a basic good pick here. Again, adjust. Look at the brightness contrast. And we're going to do my fill light. Now that's set up from before and that's way too bright. I didn't want to go that far. So let's just go to about a 30 and do a preview. That's not too bad. And that looks more or less natural. Well, maybe go 35. Let's sneak it up to 40, but no more than that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Again, it's flattened it a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add some contrast back in. So we adjust it. Go back to brightness contrast. Brightness contrast here. I have preset from before 10, right over there, 10 contrast, 10 and 10. Take a look at before, after. Not a big change, but just enough to put a little contrast back in it. Okay, okay. I'm going to do one pass on the sharpening. I always uh, try and do that with some of these images, even though I do have good eyes on it. So we're going to go to sharpness, sharpen more, one pass. I'm going to deselect, selection, none. But I want to put a little more in those eyes. And they're still slightly soft, and you'll see the jagged lines. We're going to take a few minutes, just blend that out. That's not going to be very hard at all. I'm going to go just to the manual selection brush here, freehand selection. I'm going to hold my shift key. That way I can do two separate selections. So first thing I'm going to do is um, start here. Yeah, just walk around the eye. Then when I get around, I hit my right click on my mouse and it's picked it. Now I'm going to press my shift key and pick my second eye. Same thing with my left mouse button. I'm walking around, walking around. I've picked the eye now and I right click and I've got two eyes picked. I'm going to do an adjust, sharpness more. And I'm even going to give it another hit. Really make them sharp. Okay. That almost looks too sharp when you're close up like this. But when you back off, selection none, it looks pretty natural. It gives that nice glint in the eye. Uh, you know, it's starting to turn into a good image. So, but however, the lines are too well defined here. So we go back to our scratch remover. Right now I'm set for 60. I'll go down to 30, relatively small. And we'll do a blend. Blend that out. Smooth it out, blend it out. We don't care if that if there's a sharp border line. We just want to make sure it doesn't look so jagged. I'm just I'm not going to do the whole image. I'm just this is just enough for you to get the idea of what I'm up to here. I do this with a lot of my selected images just to smooth out that surface. I'll go both directions and you can you know hack at it different ways. It's like taking a paring knife almost. So there I am. Right here is very, very, needs some good blending, especially around here on the one side. I'll leave this side alone so we can do a comparison. And there we are. So there's kind of a before and after. See, we don't have the sharp, jagged line here anymore. It's, it blends nicely. Here we still do. But again, that's easy to correct with your with your uh, scratch remover. Again, I use it as my favorite blending tool. Just take that all out. I'll, there we go. You get the idea. We're not gonna go through the whole thing. Um, the one thing I am gonna do a quick scratch remover on, I go to my standard size, I use about 120. I'm gonna get rid of some of this noise here. Get rid of that, 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 out. Um, I really don't want these things in there, so I'm going to clone them out. So uh, the point being, I took a kind of a, a lousy, dark image, and now we're ending up with something kind of kind of reasonable, if you will. It's, it's, it's attractive. He's starting to stand out on his own. The image is, is turning to something rather interesting from my perspective. All right, and I think what we'll do one more time, like I did before, uh, we get, he's really starting to, we have a nice portrait of this chipmunk, and now we'll do uh, a depth of field again, 
just to kind of get rid of this forward uh, uh, foreground uh, noise here. But now what I'm going to do on this, I'm going to do something a little different here. I want to try and keep the, some of the sharpness and some of the same plane that he's at. So I'm going to work a way out and I'm going to go around with him here, kind of keep some of the wood in focus there though, on his left and right, but get rid of this here. 15 is probably a little bit much, so I don't think we'll have to go beyond 10 on the blur intensity. So here we have uh, this foreground a little bit in focus here, and now we're going to blur it just a little bit. It's correcting now, and there we are. And there you have another finished image. Uh, we've we've brightened him up. We've eliminated all the noise and stuff that we had when we first took the image on the on the left and right. <clears throat> took out some of the uh, noisy, distracting images. I like to keep my images simple. So took out some of the spots, anything that kind of steals the eye with the main subject. And, and now you have finished subject. Uh, if, if it were me just by myself, I still have a lot of uh, uh, softening or blending of the edge line here and maybe some other, a uh, little bit of cloning here along the toes. But 90% uh, of the picture is done now. Let's go on to something, uh, you know, uh, we're going to do this hummingbird as well. This is pretty quick. And then we're going to do the really challenging photo. We'll do this uh, kayaker on the bridge here. But first, let's do this one. This is relatively quick. Pretty much the same thing, very similar to what we've done before. I shot this bird very early morning light. The light was coming from the right and coming right across her. I didn't want to use a flash, which I typically use on hummingbirds because the, the birds are uh, are bothered by it. I usually use a dial down flash to capture their wings. But uh, this to me seems much more natural. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the image. Let's, because we want to, obviously that's our subject. And we're going to go a little bigger on it. We like to, there we go. She's going to dominate. And there's our crop, got a good start. Well, I don't like the feeder in the picture. Some people might leave it in there. It's not a bad reference and it doesn't take away from it. I like to just keep her in flight. So I'm gonna clone that out. Again, I got a nice even uh, color here, uh, dark. It's gonna be an easy clone. So I'm gonna right pick, move over a little bit, hit my left button and then start the clone. Just like this, easy clone. We're going to get this out of the image. It's probably a little too big to use my scratch remover. That's cool. Would be too big a scratch. Uh, uh, up and down. Work. You work very similar colors and lighting, so it doesn't look like you've cloned. Keep it rather neutral. There we go. And there. So now we got the bird on a standalone, but some harsh shadowing. Uh, what we'll do is we'll use our, our smart selection brush again. I'm going to pick the bird. There we go. Did a really nice job of getting almost all the bird in the first shot. I don't see areas where it missed. I could probably expand this little bit area here where the have some back wing flutter. Yeah, there we go. All right. We're going to go back to adjust. I'm going to put some fill light on it. Again, it's fill light acts like there's a flash there. Just enough. That's a that's at 40. I think I'll brighten it up a little more. We'll go to 50. Okay. This is a before. This is an after. Just enough to put some light in there to fill in those shadows. In fact, I might even go a little further. There we go. Again, now it's it's flattened it with the brightness, so I'll put a little contrast back into it again. Brightness, contrast. I don't want to brighten it too much anymore, but I want the contrast, so maybe something like that. There we go. Takes out a little bit of the flattening. I might even go just a slight darkening. Very good. Hit OK. I might as well, even though I've shot with a sharp lens, I'm just going to do one pass on the sharpening while I've got the selection done. Do a sharpen more. So we have a nice sharp image. 
uh, nice selection. I'm going to unselect, select, go to selections menu, select none. And there, for the most part, I'm finished. Uh, what I would do now is, as I've done with the previous images, and I'm not going to go through every step on that now because we've been through enough, I'll just do a couple of small areas like where we have some challenges here. Use my, my scratch remover, set it to about 30 or 40. Right here, just a little bit of blending. Here, there was a part that was missed, so we can kind of rebuild that. I'm going to do a quick, small clone. Go to 40. That's a good size. And just put her back out there. Put that little piece back out there, just like that. And then I'll blend in these lines here. But for the most, especially here, you see where you can see where we brightened it here. Again, we'll use our scratch remover later. And kind of blend that out. You know, that, and you can, uh, how do I say this, lean the scratch remover a certain way so you can blend uh, to get more of the light out. You, you kind of, um, move the scratch remover more into the light area so it, it picks up more of that in the averaging. I know that's a difficult concept. You just have to play with it and you'll see how you can blend in different ways, darker or lighter. But then I say that kind of smooths it out a little bit and I would go around the bird. But that's basically a, a finished image. I took a kind of a lousy image, very dark, but the wing gave us a nice pronounced uh, uh, image and I wanted to save this one. So that's how we kind of, took a, a dark bird that, and got rid of the feeder and, and made this kind of a an image I wouldn't mind putting on my wall. <laughs> but anyway, let's go to something a little tougher here. Uh, I was setting up to do an HDR of the bridge. I was actually going to try and do it in infrared. I have an infrared camera, which is a subject for a different day. And and all of a sudden, this, this uh, kayaker is coming through the bridge. He's kind of drifting. He's looking at his iPod or something. I said, oh, that's a nice image. So I, I had a wide angle lens on there. So I, I swung around, I had to take it off the HDR settings I had, and I just clipped a few shots off, off my tripod. But here's what I don't like about this image. Uh, the foreground is very dark. The sky is too bright. He's too, the kayaker is too small and I got, you look here, we'll zoom in a little bit, and I got a zillion sensor spots. Let's fix this thing, okay? Because I like the basic image. I think this is, has, has a lot of potential. So I'm going to go to my smart selection brush. We're going to go through a number of steps on this one, so we're going to walk through this very slowly. I'm going to zoom in on our guy here, okay? I bet you he never thought he was going to be in a Corel webinar. Uh, so we select our kayaker. Okay, and this one's going to be a little trickier here. So we kind of highlight the whole area. Yezo. And it did a pretty good job, but now we're going to have to coax it. I'm going to press my shift key and click on certain areas. Just one step clicks to pick a little bit more because we're going to, we're actually going to blow him up and put him back in the picture because I think he's too small in the main image, as I mentioned. So I'm just going to walk around. This is where we have to really be careful because we want to get everything here. Uh, there, the reflection and his back a little bit. And I think we got it. A little bit of the head here and a little bit of the boat here. We've got it. Now I go up here to the edit, up here into the menu. I hit edit, copy. I'm going to hit edit. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to hit edit again. Paste as new image. Now we've opened another window. I have this as a separate image. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to do adjust, resize. Here's where we get into some of the new features that I really like. Um, oh, excuse me, image. Got myself lost there. Resize, image, resize. 
I've already preset this thing up for 200%. I want to double the size of that kayaker. And one of the new features you'll find here in, in uh, PaintShop Pro is they have something called advanced and AI power settings. Uh, it's, it's in the resize manual, but it's basically an AI upsize, if you will. I really like this because when you blow up an image, it tends to get pixely, get some noise in there. This software removes all that. So I've got this picked for photorealistic, uh, and I don't want to go maximum, but basically about two thirds. They accelerate it so we can uh, we don't have to wait all day. I'm going to go hit OK, and it's upsizing. Oops. Well, unfortunately. This has happened to me before, and it's my computer. I've crashed it, but let me let me bring it back. It's only taking me a second. It's not the software. It's actually my computer. I've been getting a little hinky lately, but give me just a second, and it's easy enough to bring back. I'm going to get that image. We're back again. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna pick it. Just as we did before. It'll go relatively quickly now. Take me just a second. Okay. Edit, copy. Edit, paste as new image. Adjust, image, resize. I'm gonna turn off the GPU acceleration just to make see if that maybe may have created a problem. And there it goes, it is resizing. Now there we go. Edit, I'm gonna put this by, what I'm gonna to do to this one, I'm going to sharpen it. Sharpen more. Edit. Copy. And now we go back to our main image. I'm going to unselect what I had because I'm going to get rid of him now. I have a lot of room to paste the new image. So what we'll do now is I'm going to go to my clone tool. Go to about 100. And let's clone him out. Work from both sides. Nothing too radical here. And we're in. Okay, now I have the image. And now we're going to paste him back in and find a nice spot for him. Edit. Paste as new selection. Edit, paste as a new selection. Hope he's a little bigger now. And we'll put him right about there. Selections, none. And now we've got, an, I think, a better size on him. So now we've got good placement on our kayaker. It looks like from a good, compositionally, we have a pretty good image. Now what I want to do is I want to lighten this foreground, darken this sky. So again, I'm going to look at the whole picture. I'm going to go to my adjust, brightness, contrast, and we're going to do fill light again. The beauty of fill light, it looks for the darker areas, okay, without affecting the light areas very much. But now this is too bright for me. I just want a subtle anchoring of the picture. So I'm going to go to about a, say about a 20. Uh, right about there, okay? That brings out the foreground. We'll leave that alone. I want to come back and I want to take out some of this noise here. We're now going to do my auto selection br uh, brush. I want to pick the sky because, again, I think that's too bright. So I'm going to do adjust, brightness, contrast. This time I'm going to do a straight brightness contrast. We're going to bring it down about 20% put some contrast back in it. See how we get a little, a little darker sky now. One thing I also like to do now that I have it selected, I also do something that will make it pop. A nice little tool they have in here is 
under brightness contrast, called something called local tone mapping. It actually splits the tones in an area uh, where we're going to separate some of the whites and darks. So now here I have this set for a strength of 10. I'm going to do a before and after. There's before. There's after. See how it kind of makes the entire area pop? You've got to be careful with this tool because sometimes it'll create a halo effect, but in this bright picture, you don't see the halo. 10 might be a little strong, so I'm going to bring it down to 5 so this area doesn't turn quite as dark in, in the tone splitting. But we're going to use that. Okay, I'm going to select none. And now I have a, a very good start here. So now I want to get rid of a couple objects here that are bothering me. My scratch remover, I remove a lot more than scratches. So I'm going to go to 200 on this one. I'm going to get rid of this. That, again, is just a distraction to the eye. Out. I'm going to get rid of that. Here, I want to get rid of this. Again, that it probably could be left in. I, I like to keep the uh, focus on the kayaker. I'm going to go here. Here, you try and follow the axis of the stone so you can get the whites. There we go. I'm going to get rid of this whole thing, actually. So now I go to my cloning tool. I'm going to go to 300, get a little more aggressive here, and work it from both sides. That, to me, just takes away from the foreground. I'm getting rid of this uh, entire... It's actually a concrete block that really shouldn't even be in the image, so. All right, there we are. So we're almost finished now. Now, what I mentioned earlier, I got lots of Spencer spots here. So I'm gonna go back to my scratch remover, go to about 120. Look at that mess. So go through across each one. Scratch Remover is, does a beautiful job with sensor spots. It gets rid of every sensor spot here. Takes five, ten minutes. You know, I like to walk through the photograph, look for where I have a few. There's a one, there's another. I'm not going to do them all because we'll be here a while. There's just a, just a couple of the obvious ones. Again, these are things, especially if you enter competitions, or if you look for uh, making a wall hanging, those things will be very pronounced when you blow this image up. But there, we have a finished image. We've taken uh, 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 what I could call a random shot. We have an, compositionally that all works. You know, we have a nice leading lines. We have a nice subject in here. It's very evocative, uh, but it needed a lot of improving. We have, a, I wanted to bring up the foreground a little bit to anchor the picture, to kind of frame this whole thing in, darken the sky a little bit, uh, make our kayaker bigger, because I thought it was just a little too small in the in the background of the image, and then and then just do the finishing by removing a lot of the, the noise. There's still some sensor spots in there, but that's something I can do later. So there you have it. I I I've uh, I basically uh, taken a marginal image and, and turned it into something we can use. I'm just going to walk through, go back to my um, go back to my file explorer here, and I just want to walk through some of these images that we've done before. I've got them already here in order, and, uh, and some other ones you haven't seen. But basically, here's what we started with on the bridge, and here's how we finished it. The hummingbird finished. Our chipper. Again, this is the kind of things that you can do with the tools I've just showed you. Each one of these is now an image that's worthwhile, worth keeping, can be displayed. Here's a couple that we didn't go over. Here's a picture of Bambi and Bambi improved. Again, the bird we did earlier. Again, macros, uh, again, very dark, but bringing them in, doing some sharpening and a little bit of brightening, and we turn it into a keeper. Here we have a, a, a deer, a good start of an image. I didn't like the line here, so we took it out. 
Get a little sharpening and we're in business. So, back to our presentation. That pretty much wraps up uh, what I wanted to talk about today. I hope you found some of the tools I've uh, presented to you useful. I, again, I'm, I, my whole crux of this is to encourage you not to get discouraged after you see some of your first shots, because I'm telling you, anything you do is recoverable. We can, you use some of these uh, tools and you don't have to use them like hammers. If you use them pretty much like scalpels, we can really bring out uh, some of the, uh, some of our, well, our worst shots, and then we can re really make them something worth displaying. And that's it for me. I'm, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Carly. As I mentioned earlier, you feel free to ask me or Carly any questions, and I'm happy to answer them. Carly? Well, thanks so much, George. That was a really excellent presentation. And thank you to everyone so much for your attendance today as well. Uh, so just a quick reminder to watch out for a follow-up email you'll all receive tomorrow, which will include a link to uh, watch a recording of this presentation, as well as a 40% off discount code to purchase any script, both individual scripts or bundles of scripts, from the Paint Shop Pro Welcome Book. Okay, thanks everyone, and see you next time. Carly?